Hey there, today I'm going to show you how I made my SIBO yogurt. Um, this is the recipe from um, the Super Gut book by Dr. William Davis and uh, my first couple of batches were absolute disasters but this one turned out perfectly. So let's get stuck in and I'll show you how. So I've got Dr. William Davis's book here and I've just started reading that but I've been listening to him online as well. So I'll put a link to this book in the description of the video. Um, and so the SIBO yogurt is what he recommends if you have or suspect you have SIBO um, because it contains three different bacteria. It contains um, l ruteri, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, l ruteri, l gasseri, and bacillus coagulans. So I made my first batch um, using those three bacterias, using the l ruteri um, pills that are from, they're made by BioGaia. Bio I'll link to those below as well. I don't have any left, so I can't show you. Um, I use those, I, so I use Dr. McCullough's l eye capsule. So you, you put in, you use 10 of the BioGaia tablets and crush those up. One of these, open the capsule up and tip the powder in, and then one um, Bacillus coagulans capsule as well. Now I'm, I used a different brand because I couldn't get what he had recommended and they were out of stock and so um, I ended up using these ones here which are just that bacteria as well and I had a look on Amazon and they had really good reviews so I kind of figured that they were probably a good product so I don't know if it's the exact same strain is the only thing because he said the different strains make a difference but people have been using these for uh, IBS diarrhea and getting good results so I kind of figured that it was probably a good strain. So though that's what I used in my initial batch. Now, when you're making this, this uh, it's a basically fermented dairy is what it is. When you're making that, um, the first batch in particular often really separates into curds and whey. And that's what I found, even when I tried to make the El Ruderie by itself, which I did, I tried two batches of that and both of them came out just so separated. They they overflow, overflowed the container. They were full of, uh, apparently it releases carbon dioxide. And so pushed the lid up, overflowed, made a big mess. So as you can see, it was quite a mess. That was from, that was from my first batch. And I made a one litre batch of El Rotary, um the first time. And as I said, and it, it overflowed and did this weird stuff as I said and then the second time I did the same thing so I kind of gave up on that and thought okay I'm just going to make the SIBO yogurt and see how that goes and that was a lot better it did rise up but it only came up to the top of the lid and that was the first batch and it is normal for it to separate and go into curds and whey so what I did with those batches was I just basically we, we were eating them to start with the because um, it kind of goes like almost hard, crunchy, looks like spider webs almost, it's really weird. But we um, we were eating that with just normal kefir that I make as well. And then I came up with the idea of blending it. So I actually blended them in my Thermomix, you could use a blender with some of the whey and they, they came out creamy then and it was more like a yogurt. So we've been eating that. So today I'm gonna make my second batch of SIBO yogurt. So with the three bacterias, but I'm gonna use my original batch to make that. So, so what I did was I actually put some of the whey into muffin tins and pop them in the freezer, I'll show you. So I actually froze some of the whey, so I'm gonna take those out, pop those in a plastic bag for uh, to use for future batches. And that's a, a really good way, if it does separate in particular, uh, that's a really good way of keeping some of the um, your original batch for future. And it's kind of spreads it out longer because for some, sometimes you can use it multiple times and then it just starts doing weird things and so you need to start again uh, because obviously other bacteria have got in there and are starting to compete. But um, this is one way to actually make it last longer so I can keep these in the freezer for ages and use them to start further, future batches if I want to. So today I'm using one of those to start this batch. So you can see in here I have my frozen lump of whey and I've sterilized this container. So this is off off of my um, Lavelli yogurt maker that I bought to do this. So 
um, you actually need to ferment these um, products for 36 hours and most yogurt makers only go to 12 or 24. Some people actually make this yogurt in their instant pot um, and it depends on what model you've got. So some of the models you can set it to temperature and for 36 hours and some you can't um, and you need to check and see whether they're actually holding temperature correctly because if the temperature uh, is too high or too low then this isn't going to work whereas this uh, Lavelli yogurt maker is actually kind of designed for this and so they have um, you, you can set the temperature anywhere from uh, 25 to 50 degrees celsius and right up to 36 hours which is brilliant um, i will pop a link to the Lavelli yogurt maker down below this company also have um, the bacteria to start the El Ruderi and the El Gasserai yogurts and um, that's what I'm going to use next time I have to start from the beginning because I have a feeling that they are probably going to be more consistent than the actual tablets are for doing this because that's what they've been created for. So I'm going to, to start with, I'm using UHT milk at the moment. Um, I would rather not and eventually I'm going to experiment with other milk. Um, but until I get the knack of this, I'm using UHT milk. So what Dr. Davis recommends is half and half. So UHT, or I think it's got another abbreviation in America. So basically ultra high temperature um, milk. And he recommends using half and half because the cream helps it to uh, work better as well, I guess. So what I'm doing is I'm using UHT because we can't get half and half here in New Zealand. I'm using UHT and I'm using cream. So I've worked out from the ratios of fat, protein and everything else on the American UHT, I've worked out that I need to use, for every 800 mils of this, I use 200 mils of cream. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And so because my cream isn't ultra high temperature treated, I'm going to bring it up to temperature with a bit of milk and then I can let it cool down and we can um, show you, how, I'll show you how to do the rest. So I'm going to pop, to, to heat this up, I'm just going to put in 400 mils of the milk. Okay, so I have my 400 mils of UHT milk there. Actually, yeah, that's close enough. And I'm going to pop that into here. So I basically use this bowl and pot like a double boiler. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about the milk burning. And I'm going to put 400 mils of milk of cream in as well. I could have probably just heated up the 400 mils of cream, but I thought I'd mix them together and let that heat up. So I'm going to bring that up to temperature. Um, and the temperature needs to be about 90, uh, 90 degrees Celsius. So I have a cheese thermometer here. Um, okay, so I just sterilized my thermometer like this. So, so I've got some chlorine dioxide solution in this little bottle here. And I just drip that onto here and the paper towel. To make sure that my cheese thermometer is sterilized. And then I just give it a wipe. Because chlorine dioxide solution is amazing for sterilizing all sorts of things and it's used in the food industry uh, they usually use chlorine dioxide gas i think most of the time and so i'm just going to wipe around the inside of my glass here you just want to keep it as sterile as you can because if you get competing bacteria in there then your um your SIBO yogurt isn't the bug isn't probably going to last as long as it would do because if you get other bacteria in there they're going to compete so i have that all ready to go and what i do is i just letting my milk and cream heat up and so once this is done i'm going to add another 16 so another 1200 mils of the uht milk to make two liters so that um Lavelli container that for the Lavelli yogurt maker 
holds two liters okay so that's what I'm making today and so I'm just going to wait for this to heat and then we can keep an eye on the temperature at the moment it's sitting on about 60 degrees Celsius so it's got a little way to go so I want that up to 90 degrees and then the recommendation is to hold it there for about 20 minutes or so okay so we're just about at 90 degrees and if you can see that on the screen there so now I'm just going to put the timer on for 20 minutes and we'll come back once that's done so while I'm waiting, I'm going to put the rest of the milk into the jug to help that um, frozen whey to um, defrost. See if I can pour this without making a mess this time. So this jug holds 500 mils is the top measurement. So as I said, I need another 1.2 litres. So that's 500. Just grab some more milk. Okay, so that's one litre. And I want another 200 mils, and then I've got 400 mils plus the cream in the double boiler heating up. So that is. Okay, so I'm just making sure that the, my cup's sterile. And I'm going to add, you need to add two tablespoons of inulin for each litre of milk uh, is the recommendation. So I'm going to go one, two. So this is just an organic inulin and I'm wondering whether this is part of the reason why I'm having problems maybe this inulin doesn't work as well for it as some that's the other thing that the Lavelli have is they have a um, prebiotic so this is food for the bacteria and uh, so you need to use some kind of food for the bacteria in your uh, fermented dairy um, to get the numbers of bacteria to get it to multiply the way you want it so um, I'm questioning whether this one, maybe there's something with this that, it, that it's feeding them too much, but I'll use the two tablespoons per liter again and we'll see how this batch turns out. Okay, so I'm also going to add a tablespoon of our SIBO yogurt that I've made previously. So this was our first batch that, as I, as I said, was really um, separated and so I just blended it. So it worked. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of that. The consistency isn't, it's still a bit all over the place with it. Okay, so I'm just going to add some of this milk. So I should have done this before, but I forgot. And then you just mix those together. The inulin can take a little bit of mixing. Um, it goes a bit lumpy. What I did the last time was I actually put the inulin and the, um, the bacteria in here and added a bit of milk and then uh, mixed it up in, in here which was probably a lot easier but I'll make it work okay so it didn't quite feel like it was mixing up properly I could feel it was stuck down the bottom so Decided I had to get a teaspoon to sterilise it under some boiling water. That's better. I can feel like I can get the inulin out because it was all kind of stuck in the corners. Okay, that all feels like it's pretty well mixed up now. There might be a few little lumps in there, but that's okay. Um, because the bacteria eat the inulin up anyway so hopefully we don't have any lumps left in the 
yogurt at the end. So I'm just going to pour that in. There was a few lumpy bits in there, but that's all good. Now I've just got to wait for my milk and cream to finish um, its heating time, and then I need to let that cool down, and then I'll come back and add that to this, and then we'll pop it into the yogurt maker. All right, so this has done its 20 minutes of heating, uh, sitting at 90 degrees Celsius, and so I'm just going to pull that out. I'm going to let it cool down. Um, normally I would put that into some cold water to cool it down quickly, but we've actually got something to do for the next half an hour, so I thought I'd just leave it sitting on the bench and let it cool down. So this is just about cool enough, I think. Um, just got it in some cold water. Just going to check the temperature. So I want it under, under 40 degrees Celsius. Because even though I'm adding it back to colder, cooler milk, if it's too hot and it hits the bacteria, it might kill some of them. So you just want to make sure that it's not too hot. It's just slightly over 40, so. If I'd actually done things in order, I could have just added some of the um, milk back into this, but because I've already added the bacteria and the inulin into the other lot of milk, then um, I probably do need to wait until this is cool enough. So it's just under 40 degrees now, I think. I'm going to make sure I've actually got it in the milk while I'm checking it out. Yep, just under 40 degrees, so it's about... 39 coming down to 38 degrees so that's probably plenty cool enough to add to my milk and my bacteria my bug so i'm just gonna get that to wipe off and i'm just gonna pour this in There we go, perfect. Now I'm hoping that this batch doesn't rise up and overflow. <laughs> Otherwise I'm going to have a mess in my yogurt maker again. Um, but we will see. So I'm just going to pop the lid on there. So my lid was um, sterilised as well. I just put some boiled, poured boiling water into the lid and let it set, sit for a few minutes. Um, so these are made from silicon, so they're all heat proof. And... Um, dishwasher proof as well. So I'm just going to put this into the yogurt maker. So I'm just going to add some water to the yogurt maker. Oops. I have a problem pouring things without making a mess. So it's got a, a maximum level on the back of this that uh, you don't want to go over. So that's about it at max there. So I just pop the lid on. And then to set it, I just go there and I take it up to 37. That's I did my last batch on 37 degrees uh, Celsius. And then the time just it defaults to eight hours and you just turn it up to 36. And confirm. And that's it done. So it'll be ready. Um about 11 o'clock, 11.30 um, tomorrow night. Yeah, so that 36 hours from now. Okay, we'll have a look at it once it's done. No separation, no way down the bottom. Perfect. We have success. So as you can see, there's real yogurt in there. So that looks like all the, just all the fat from the cream has come to the top here, but that's creamy, delicious yogurt. That's it. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. Um, so I had a couple of disasters, but this batch of um, yogurt has turned out really well. I'm going to have uh, do a bit of an experiment and try making the El Ruderi yogurt again. I have some frozen whey from my other batch uh, batches in the freezer, so I'm going to make a small amount with that and see if I can get it to work properly like this. And so yeah, it's great. So um, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and, and hit the like button. 
Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, fire away below. I thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you again another day. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.